welcome to About Effing Time, the number one podcast in my dreams. So does, right. it, does that mean I'm in your dreams, George? Uh, oh, the three of us together? Do I admit that? So I don't know if I admit it. I'm I think like, you just have. I'm like, I, I'm like, guys, what did you do last night? I heard something happened. You, 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 you didn't invited. invite me. No, you were invited. Let I'm me, like, I was at NFI'd on phone. that one. I'm going to prove I it. was at NFI'd. No. Not fucking um, invited for everyone out there. Yes. No, you were invited and we had a lovely dinner, didn't we, Adrian? The, 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 the invite was for a lovely dinner. Yeah. I was promised a roast. <laughs> I was given a kebab. <laughs> hey, this is... um, to, to be fair, it was a brilliant it was Greek a kebab. kebab. <laughs> it was lovely. Yeah. Okay, and sorry, who were you with? So we're with the amazing, the illustrious, and well spoken about Richard. Richard from, Bank from, from Studio, Studio Underdog, Underdog, who reminded me last night that Studio Underdog, can you just have a quick, if I say how long has Studio Underdog been going, what do you say? A year and a half. Well, yeah, that, that's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we really oh, such good television. The suspense. Eighteen months. Okay. Okay. Good. So, it, I, I wanted. To, I wanted. To, if I was a more confident chap, perhaps I would have been proud for him to have only been doing it for eighteen months. Yeah. But I was genuinely annoyed. I know. I was like, no, dude, you, you're and, not supposed uh, and to he's be so young. You're not supposed to be this successful with a watch company. Yeah. So early. Because how long has Buck and Jack been going? Ah, uh, four years. Five years? Four? Yeah. It's like seven. No, no, it's been Oh, good. the Instagram account's been going eight years. Yeah. yeah. And, and we first spoke, I think, probably in 2016. I swear. It's at least six years ago. I, I was living in Beaumaris, I remember. So, guys, what is on your wrist today? Okay. I'll go first. I have my... I'll take it off. I'll take it off. I'll take it off. Come on. This is... This is... This <laughs> is... One of the coolest watches around, I know, Captain Boring, it's a Seamaster, but the movement <laughs> in this thing is epic. It's on a Bark and Jack NATO strap as standard. And it has to be a grey NATO strap because I'm wearing a grey NATO t-shirt. Uh, but this is a Seamaster, 300 professional. Look at that. You are just so Jason Hayton right now. Uh, like, oh, yeah. I feel like the royalties should just be going ding, ding, grey t-shirt, <laughs> grey NATO, Seamaster. I mean, it, it's just got good taste. Dial what, and what it's, say. it's a great watch. Killer watch. Do you want to give Killer. a shout out to grey NATO? Yeah, shout out to grey NATO. The, the podcast is... Yeah, uh, there it is. Oh. Oh, yep. oh, hello. Yeah. Look at that. Um, <laughs> what are you wearing? I am wearing the... You can never get it. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> even if he's in the middle, he can't get it in okay. the middle. It's the Ferlinmari Mechanical oh, 1. Sorry, we're going to take this off. Oh, we do. We've got to take it off. We've got to take you this know, off. I just want to tell a quick story about Ferlinmari because I didn't really understand this brand. To me, it, it really presented, and that maybe it presents to you as a as one of these micro brand hype Sector brands dial. that that everyone just there's, there's this hype. The hype around it is the fact that there's hype around it. But I sat next to Andrea <sighs> Ferland at Bavette de Bain in Geneva, and he spent forty five minutes telling me about his new uh, cow horn lugs. They're mirror polished on the top and satin finished on the side. So if you look at this closely, you can see. Have a look, George. You're you're a man for details. Look at the different finishings in the lug on the yeah. lugs. He was he just spent forty five minutes telling me about the lugs I also and showing like the me as well. a deconstructed lug on an iPad. And I'm and I was sort of amazed at how boring that was. But then I started to get drawn into. Well, why is that such a big deal? And at this price point, to get that level of finishing, to have two finishings on a on a on a rounded uh, part like that, is really very unusual. What what price is this? What what area? Well, I actually can't recall. I think it's is it around two thousand. Oh, yeah, right. I thought this was going to be your B B Y O I. When I saw this next door in our green room, yeah. I thought yeah. it was a B Y O I. Um, on my wrist, because we are talking today about the best alternatives. Well, this is part two. Um, I thought to myself, is I'm going to bring a Daytona. I am literally going to be bringing a Daytona. Okay. So I have got the. Hoya of course it Daytona. Is. Oh yes. What else would it be? I mean, like, look at this integrated bracelet. Take it off, Josh. Um, I I have brought this watch because I always love when you kind of talk about a Daytona and you just go, "How did Hoya get to call one of their watches a Daytona?" Um, it is. It's nuts you know and wonderful. That's from? I knew you were going to ask that question. No, I don't. <laughs> so, so, but I just loved when this came out and it came out uh, with three dials and this one is one of my favorite, the kind of, what would I say? The, um, the fume blue dial uh, with that cream and ivory. It just, there's a sexiness to this watch. It, it's weird on the wrist, but um, honestly, I kind of love it because it is that oddball watch. Yep. That's smart. So That's look, 
on that note, it is about effing time that we talk about the best um, alternative watches. Um, this is part two. So, without further ado... <laughs> What have we got first? What is up? The masked watchmaker is the back. The masked watchmaker. What is it? Oh. I did you see? I big pilot. See, big pilot. Well, look, it's technically a big pilot. Uh, I think we could say that we are going to talk about alternatives to all the big pilots, including the BP forty three. Yeah. Which is quite different to the original. Which in itself is an alternative to the. To the big, big, the big, pilot. big, big, big pilot. So this is technically already an alternative. What could possibly replace a big pilot? Who's going to go first? I will go first, just because you guys seem to be paused and not very well prepared for this moment. Uh, oh, fuck it. I'll go, go first. So my my alternative to this, which I've already spoken about on the uh, on the podcast, oh, yes. is Vice Watch Company in America. Yes. Uh, th these guys... It's a subdial position. The subdial position, the I mean, this is just a pilot's watch out and out. But what I love about this is one, the logo is fucking brilliant. I, I, yeah, I, I put a lot of uh, value in the logo, value in the name of watch, and I love how this has been executed. And this is two thousand no, pounds or starting from two thousand pounds. You can customize this. You can choose different dials, different yeah. straps, and you can play around with it. And these are all handmade in America, which is for two grand. I think is amazing. I I I I I I think that is amazing. I feel I feel like you almost dropped the bar on all of us and I'm oh, sorry. No, you have not heard mine. Have heard mine, George. Come down. Um, can I go next? Yeah, absolutely. Um, mine is online, so I'm sorry about this, and I've just got to go through. And I am bringing something that I like because it is something different. Oh, great show! Uh, wow. And the reason why, because you always think that I'm uh, the <laughs> another website. This just happened. Okay, cool. perfect. Now, yeah. uh, the reason why I'm bringing something like this is because I love this because it's a 24 hour um, uh, dial. I love the whole watch. Uh, I think they they really have done a corker with this watch. Hamilton um, bringing out a field watch. Look, I I am obsessed with these 24 hour dials because I cannot read 24 hour. When someone tells me it is 1900 or something, I'm like going 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, there we go. I know where 1900. <laughs> this for me is the sensible. I I just love how they and they, and they brought they brought something cool to the table. I'm sorry, George. I love that, and I actually got my brother to buy that because he he asked me for for help to to find a watch that he wanted, and that's what he got. Um, but although I would choose that. I feel like this is my time. Yeah. To yeah. say you're fucking when boring. When Captain Boring actually nails someone else being boring, <laughs> he's, he's very excited. No, 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 no because George, I did a 24 yeah. hour dial. Don't I mean, care. No, no, okay. No, okay. okay. I, I, but but, yeah. but to, to, for the record, that's fucking awesome. I, I awesome, absolutely love that. But it's not a big pilot. That's not, to me, that's not in the big pilot realm. I mean, look, again, look, I should probably speak then if I'm going to criticize. I am bringing, boom, the Breitling Navitimer. And look, this is, to, to me, the alternatives. Yes, there can be aesthetics. You can get you could get a Stoa, you could get a Larco, you could get watches that pretty much look exactly like a big pilot. But I'm going for the Navitimer because to me the authenticity of the big pilot was that it was the closest to actual aviators' watches. Like I, there was a slide ruler and things like no, that. No, 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 more the size of it. Like it just had that heft. And there, you know, there are a lot of Navitimer options now. Um, there are many in larger sizes that are akin to a big pilot. They have that credibility. I, I know what you're about to say aesthetically yeah. they're completely different. Wait in. Just just it's wait in, please Come on. please destroy him. And I promise you, this isn't a sales call. This is, I want to give you something cool. You might remember back in season one where we explored Block watches. Neil, the guy who runs Block, he, he's designed a watch from the viewpoint. Let me share my screen with you. So Neil's designed a watch from the viewpoint of a child and to help a child understand time and read time more easily. If you look, for example, at 12, it isn't 12 o'clock. It isn't just when the hour hand is pointing at 12. It's this whole segment here. All of that is part of 12. And so this is quite a genius, quite a logical way of designing a watch for a child. Now, what we want to do is we want to give you a block watch, but we need to understand how you're consuming about effing time, whether you're watching it, whether you're listening to it, where you're watching, where you're listening. Are you watching in the toilet? Are you watching in the sitting room? Are you by the campfire? Are you jumping out of an aeroplane? Show us how you're consuming about effing time on Instagram. Take a photograph, make a post and tag us about .effing .time. 
And on the 4th of January, we're going to announce the winner of the block. I've got a call coming on the 4th of January. Join us for a live stream. I've got to go uh, and we'll announce who's won the block watch. Take care. I just, mm. I, I'm just i just not a fan of the Nava timer. I, I, I like its history. I like its placement within Breitling. I, I like its traditionalist <laughs> parts, but as a design, as yeah. for the current day, it's yeah. dated as fuck. And, and that, I feel like you didn't really speak your mind there, Adrian. <laughs> you don't mince words. In, in, in contrast to the what big, the, the fuck the are you big, talking about? <laughs> in contrast to the big pilot, this yep. is so reminiscent of the traditional, the original pilot yep. watches. Yeah. Yet there is a timeless element to it. It's been modified. The numerals are slightly different. The layout is. Yeah. Not the layout, but the, the overall execution. Slightly no small second, no power reserve. Correct. Yeah. Whereas the, the Nava timer, I, I like it, but I, I feel the overall aesthetic is dated and and. It's a totally date. different jam. And maybe, it, it, I, yes, you know what, maybe is, I yeah. just wildly missed the target here. I'm just no, thinking well, aviation the watches. The last episode, you, yeah. you took the piss out of me for, for bringing out things that weren't fitting to the criteria. <laughs> this doesn't fit to the criteria. Oh. Sorry, you're out of here. Okay, fine. Okay, can we can we can we get the? Uh, I could next, I could the... appeal to the audience at this point, but I will not because I know because they'll, they'll destroy you. Exactly, <laughs> audience, please, yeah, please, no. please, please, please no destroy need to comment. him. No need to comment. Please destroy him. <laughs> we are going to ask our watchmaker to come in and give us the next watch. I can't wait to see what this is going to be. Oh, oh, watchmaker. Oh, oh, the big oh, one, oh, watchmaker. Okay. Does it, it doesn't speak. Never. Doesn't speak. No. It doesn't speak. Uh, yeah. This is the AP Royal Oak. This is bound to happen. Oh, this, this is. I suspect we're all going to have the same alternative. This is a god. god. Adrian, don't look. You don't cheat. This is this is god god state. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so, over to Adrian first because he starts he's the last got the time. IPad. Okay, he's got the so iPad. Um, with this, I am going to go with. <laughs> So the, the, oh, the, I'm so pleased. Okay. So the idea around this, the alternatives, isn't just a different watch. There's two I elements. You did that. There's two elements to this. Is yeah. one either more accessible, an alternative by it being more accessible financially, but more accessible being able to get these are. This is a huge. What's this? Thirty grand, thirty-five grand. I think these You've are. You've got to name your child after. Huge after, after, after the huge AD. amount of money. But yeah. regardless to that, they are near impossible to get. They're 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 rocking horse shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Bomber Mercier Riviera. That's a good shout. I and do not begrudge that. I've, I've recently, I'm, I, I was, to be honest, I'm fairly new to Bomber Mercier, getting hands on. I got hands on one of these last month, I think it was, and I was blown away. Yeah. Three grand. The build quality is remarkable I for that, that amount dial. of money. Yeah. The dial is dial. awesome. It's, I, it's I, like I, a, I love the date. It's opaque. like a glass dial. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it's Sapphire an opaque dial. dial. Yeah. You can see through it just about. The, you get the aesthetic. It's nowhere near the same realm as as uh, a, a Royal Oak, but it's a tenth of the price. Yeah, and uh, it's from again, it's from the same era. Because what happened in that period in the seventies is that sports watches turned to steel thanks to AP. Like a hundred percent, no one would argue that AP started that trend away from precious metals to steel in luxury. But they were doing quartz versions. There was the the Chopard, yeah. um, what's it called, Saint Moritz, which was right. a quartz model. There was the Riviera, which was a quartz model. There was the Laureato, which was a quartz model. It goes on and on and on, and they all derive from that same sort of geometrically led design. So there's provenance too. This isn't just a brand new idea. Like they were, and not this. everyone executes it right. Yeah, I feel like this has been executed very well. I know. Um, it, it it is is. Taste. Good shout. Also, like, yeah. No, wow. Good shout. Damn it. We agree on something. Yeah. Shit. Over, over to you. I'm going to go to Laureato. Uh, I. You have nicked mine. Of course I have, because it, ah. it had to be done. But I think the Laureato, if I can say something, again, not so much in its like defense, it but while I think AP has had the 50th anniversary of the Royal Oak last year, or oh, this year, is it this year? It's this year. Uh, yeah, it's this year. They, they, had the, they, they are having the 50th anniversary this year. Uh, GP has actually made this the year when I think the Laureato has broken huge ground for them. I think the credibility of the Laureato, the Infinity model with that amazing Onyx dial yeah. that's just mm -hmm. limitless. That. Gorgeous. I, I feel like this is just getting a place at the table that it has, you know, 
when we first, because I, I own a Laureato Chronograph with the blue dial, and this is a watch that at the time was considered me too. When I was wearing it around mm -hmm. the traps, there wasn't a lot of respect. There wasn't a lot of understanding about the fact that we had a similar provenance. Um, but I feel like that's changing. Do you know, honestly, I, I wear my white ceramic one that's... Is I've it got, in the shelf of the may, may, Maybe it's in here. Oh, yes, it is, it is in here. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, so I wear this one quite a lot. Um, yes, this is a sold out one, but I, I wear it quite a lot. As you can see, I beat the hell out of it. White ceramic ghost. And honestly, I, the amount of people that ask me and say, God, I missed out on that. I mm. wanted that. I, and that is something really cool. I think this is a, this is a great watch. Um, and I hate that you've chosen it because I'm now kind of, I've got to find an alternative. I have an alternative. We, we can have this thing. Yeah, we can have no, this thing. Well, no, it, I, it, I want, it adds to the power. I yeah. wanted yeah. this watch, but I'm Will not- Will you give no, your reasons I, for having it? I, yeah. I, so yeah. for me, I, the reason why I chose this was firstly because I got an understanding of Jero Perigo. Mm -hmm. I got an understanding you of what they're doing. Yeah. And I love what they're doing. Their designer, um, Clemence, she is awesome. Um, they have a real kind of cool team there. Patrick is an amazing CEO. And I feel like Jero Perigo, even when they did the casquette coming back, yeah. the, you know, they, they're taking risks mm -hmm. and they're taking risks and doing something dynamic and they're still paying homage to the past. And so for me, this is a great watch. There is an alternative and I've got to ask someone else to help me. Uh, that's in another room. The mass watchmaker manages to find me Amazing. the actual watch. So... Dark Punk starts playing whenever I look at this guy. I, I, honestly, <laughs> yeah, I do. So I'm mean, like, come on, I, I, you know, Andrew, you can be the uh, the voiceover on okay. this because sure. this for me is. is well, a Adrian step. asked a question about this. It's a good question. Why do you have this small? Wind it up. Let's get that little baby going. Um, that's that is not a small seconds. That is a run. This this small seconds. Oh, this is not. It's cool. So the watch runs at four hertz. This is a high beat movement yeah. that is essentially an El Primero movement. And that, that hyperactive, look how fast that is. This is not sped up. So this is a full revolution of that subdial in, I think, 10 seconds. So effectively, we have a, a, show, a, a flex from Zenith that the movement inside this is not your average time-only movement. And again, they're always referring back to that manufacture heart, that incredible in-house flex that they have in some you know when places. i saw this adrian you're looking suspiciously so, so I, because I'm, I'm talking and then <laughs> we can go when i saw this in the in the um in uh the manufacturer i was just like this thing is damn cool it's and an interesting dial too because it's somewhere between the history like, somewhere between i like the how they've done the integrated the, bracelet you know it's just very easy to plop in plop out yeah you know it's one of those that i'm, I'm sound like but when i saw and this first over to adrian to end this advertorial so uh, um <laughs> i think you can tell which of us three um have relationships with this brand <laughs> and, and, <laughs> that and is harsh who can it's speak independently harsh. So when, when I, I like watches that have a purpose, um, Andrew, can, can you explain the purpose of this? Yes. It's just, it's it's just mesmerizing. It is a pure flex. And I think it's, I don't know, why yes. are you still talking? Uh, Adrian, continue, because that was a rhetorical question, and you're going to stitch me up now. Yeah, I, so I, I, I think this is a, a really awesome looking watch, and it could have been executed amazingly had this just been a running seconds. And there's just, you know what? there's you, no sometimes need to Sometimes your ability to live up to your name is breathtaking. This watch is just too exciting. <laughs> the thing is moving too fast. What, what's, what's exciting about it? There's nothing exciting about it. There's no other watch but, in the world with but, a little no, tip no, of because it's pointless. No, because but, it's absolutely it's, pointless. Do you know, do you know you what say I... say pointless, I say exciting. I know, but the <laughs> thing is... <laughs> Does that say I'm boring or you're boring? I don't know. <laughs> no, but look, I would say you. to you is when you look down at the watch and you're in a board meeting or something, because I know that that's the type of person that will be wearing this. Hang on, uh, hang on. If there's anyone that's in a board meeting, <laughs> it's Captain Boring. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, guys. It's, it's in a there, there is I just, it just make me. It makes me yes. smile. It, it, it's the equivalent of having a date window which changes every four hours. Well, see, we we need. You to... just don't need it. Well, stop it. No. 
No. This okay, is... on that note, can we okay. can we get the next watch in? Yeah, because it, 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 because it is, it honestly, is a beautiful the, watch. for me, watch I brought maker. the best watch. I know, so, okay. No, the GP really, for me, no, is I'm one of the... I'm glad you brought you know, that. And um, but, but we should mention that, again, the Skyline is uh, a previous Zenith model. None of these yeah. things are cynical attempts to cash in on, on the integrated bracelet octagonal phase. Big oh bang. Oh, my God. <laughs> Big bang hublot. Wow. Adrian, let's start with you. What's, what's, your, what's the most popular video on um, Bark and Jack? Oh, Just, one of the most popular videos oh, sorry, is, sorry, is no, exploring yeah. Hublot and why they are Exploring hated. Hublot. So Everybody my is. alternative to the Big Bang. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Now, now, that, when you do the stopwatch on that, I keep it on all the time because it just mesmerizes it's me. It's, it's just so damn sexy. That is just, oh. <laughs> yes. But yes, my, yes. My, my, my point is, is that this is the, the, the Big Bang. There is no need for any of this. This is just unnecessary. The whole thing is unnecessary. What do you mean? But but it's so so for example, what's unnecessary? Just just the design of it. it. This isn't an easy watch to read. You you don't need all this gumph going on. The screws don't even line up. Gump. I feel like this is mm. a sexier, more refined, better executed version of a watch that is a chronograph in an interesting material. It's that... just as illegible. No no no, absolutely. But I just feel like this is illegible. Made sexy and <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I feel like this sexiness is, is very subjective. No, absolutely. I'm more attracted so what's to the George's clock behind your head koala T-shirt than I am to the Grand. I, I feel like this this Defy is this um, monotone laureato on speed. And yeah. what I find sexy about this is the same thing that I find sexy about this. That it's. But do you think it's the colorway? Look, I like it's the colorway, but it's also the textures that are created by the skeletonization of the movement, regardless of the actual chronograph function itself, which is equally as as useless as as the, the subdial previous. I, I think this is stunning. I love this. Okay, over to you because I want you to be speechless. <laughs> Mine is the Zenith Defy Extreme <laughs> because. For the same reasons, oh, and I, I don't know. This this oh, is dangerous territory. I love that we're agreeing on things. No, I'm still just so. I just want to continue taking you down on the skyline. <laughs> and because I mean, this is you talk about having a pointless, uh, pointless complication. This has a one one hundredth of a second. Yeah, but it's is, so damn sexy. But, but but I feel this whole uh, category of watch is is that there, there, there doesn't need to be point to it. Aesthetics. Are, there's no. You don't need a point to aesthetics. They just they need to express something. So you're you're basically casting aspersions on the whole idea of skeletonization no. when you say that this this is pointless gump. It's a skeletonized watch. No, no, sorry. The, the whole package as a whole is we're talking about watchmaking that that doesn't need to be done. We're talking this this skeletonization is just there to show off the movement. I still don't understand it's, the it, premise. It's a Unico flyback chronograph. Like, you should be proud of this movement. This is a good movement. Sure, the movement. Re removed, this is about design. This is about ostentatious. Yeah. This is about showing off wealth. This is how, how, how I perceive it. And so for, for me, this is the equivalent. Skeletonization is the equivalent of having uh, a Ferrari with uh, a glass cover for the engine. It serves yeah. no purpose whatsoever. What do you mean? Other I love than, those things. Exactly. Me too. But the only purpose is to show off what's underneath. There's no mechanical excellence that comes from from this and so there's no need for it other it's than aesthetics exactly it's aesthetics yeah. but there's no need for it but but you choose watches based on aesthetics and purpose so i love the um how easy this is to read you've yeah. got big fat black hands on yeah. a white dial yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. no getting look how big and those loom markers are mm, yeah this so is purposeful excuse me grandpa when you finish talking <laughs> Oh my um, can I get over to mine? Because yeah. both so mine, sure. both mine is the Zenith to Fire Extreme. That's the end of the story. Uh, the exhaustion that swept over me when you chose the Zenith to Fire Extreme. This is what I... I, 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 I need... Where is that Coke Zero? <laughs> I need... I needed a shot of adrenaline, Marcus. Poison uh, out this the is going to be like Pulp Fiction. <laughs> wait, 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 you just shoot me in the chest and wake me up because I, I chose the same watch as Captain Boring. No, <laughs> the fucking disaster. <laughs> Can we mask watchmaker? Come on in. Let's just no, move no, no, on. No, 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 no. no, no. Got, got I, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. Excuse You're going to choose the Zenith Bike Screw too. You. Screw you. No, I'm actually, I'm choosing 
because I think Hublot is a step of kind of engineering and pushing forward on new technology, I'm picking something that is not about the skeletonized dial. It's not, but it's an alternative to that, and it is under the great um, supervision of what someone I think is an absolute god in the watch pictures, world. Pictures. No. Uh, oh. Interesting. Now, the reason is that I look at something like this, and I this, for me, is the watch that I chose um, because I think this is the next flex. This is the next Hublot. You know, I hate it when someone says, this is the next Saint-Tropez, because you're kind of going, well, what's wrong with Saint-Tropez? Well, for me, Hublot, <laughs> is, what's wrong with Hublot? Well, Norcane has come along and said, hey, we've got something that is integrated brace, uh, sorry, integrated case. I love this. Modular case. Modular. Yeah, so that's modular. Modular. There we go. And integrated bracelet. You're right about that. Sorry. You know, I just love how they've done this watch. And for me, this is this for me is the next one of those. And I think this is the flex this summer. And it's it is up. skeletonized. It's an interesting dial. It's a it's a highly intricate pattern. I dial mean the whole is, the uh, whole thing has got it's got some great DNA in it, and I think it's it, it really is the, like if you think about the old, uh, summer watch, this is going to be the summer watch. I have to agree. I I think I think you the, have to agree. I have to agree. I think if you like the aesthetics of Hublot, of this this format of watch, and you don't have the whatever these things go for, I think this this particular one's about 30, 20 to 30, I think. I can't remember. This this captures that format. I totally, very well. totally and violently disagree. Good, because I was worried oh that we were going to have an episode God. where we... Thank where, where God we're, we're back on safe ground. Norcane is nothing like a Hublot. Mm -hmm. A Hublot is... The Big Bang is a flyback chronograph. Therefore, mm. it's complicated at its essence. It, it makes men feel that they're useful and it makes men feel alpha because of that heft. <laughs> this is not... A, this is not... Let's 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 go deeper no, on that. This is the future <laughs> of this. This, does this not. is the future of this. this, this, this That's what I, no, I look at. They're is, totally no, different. This is the, this was the flex X amount of summers ago. Mm. Uh, that's going to be the flex. I, 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 I don't agree. That's no. going to be the future. But I no. do agree in your choice that that captures that. The, the and elements essence. are the same. We have yeah. okay. So we have mod and this is the Jean Claude Biver magic touch. He has modular elements. He has. He loves to skeletonize to show the movement because, again, you know, in, in the fight against courts and in the fight against smartwatches, we need to reveal that there's a mechanical component to the watch, and we do that through skeletonization. But I find that the brand spirit of Norcane is very different. We can discuss this another day, and I need to call George Bamford out. This is my watch. Yeah. My BYOY, <laughs> and you just jacked it. And I, it was I, on my fucking list, so gonna, screw you. Yeah, me and the mass watchmaker are going to take you out. Um, no, but for me, this is this is one of those that I, I freaking love what, where they're going. Yes, it's a different brand, totally different brand, but I'm pleased it's a what different brand. What a roller coaster of, coaster of an episode. Okay. We all agreed, then we all didn't uh, guys, agree. Guys, guys, we, we, we've got a very important thing that, that we have to talk about, and that is um, that... Over sixty percent of the people who watch our episodes mm -hmm. haven't subscribed to our episodes. Yes, and right. so subscribe. The power of subscribing—it's got nothing to do with boosting our egos. We don't mm. need any of that because our egos We're are far bigger. We're already the number one watch podcast in Latvia. So in Latvia, cool. Yeah. So the dude yeah. in Latvia who's listening, thank you. Yeah. Very thank much. you very much. But the benefit of subscribing means that not only you get notifications when we drop new episodes, it means that when we go to brands <laughs> and we want to get hands on with watches, <laughs> they sort us out. So yeah. um, subscribe. thanks, okay. Yeah. And if you like, hit hit like button. If you don't, then don't. Sorry to interrupt the show. But it's about effing time we launched a discussion on watch Look winders. <laughs> Look, watch winders are a obvious and to me, very logical yeah. companion to beautiful watches. And Wolf Winders, who've kindly sponsored about effing time, are one of the greatest brands in the game, and that's because they've been around for longer than many Swiss brands. 1834! There it is, the, the, the nice. clue is on the box. Now, why would you get a winder? The fact is, if you are continually moving your watch, there is less of a need for servicing because the oil doesn't coagulate and congeal. There's all kinds of reasons George could talk about it that I won't. And he, the proof so is the pudding. I've had, I've had a perpetual problem, and the perpetual problem has been my perpetual calendar. And so I have put it in my Wolf uh, winder. Thank you very much, Wolf. And it has kept it alive for the whole of the show. And if you've been watching the show, you will notice it there. 
Now, Wolfwinders have a claim to fame, which is that they are the only winder company that counts rotations. It does not make a calculation based on time. It actually counts the individual rotations each day. Thank There's you. lots of Wolf products, aside from the two that you see here in front of us, there is Wolf Carry, there are Wolf Jewelry Boxes, there's all kinds of a Wolf world to explore. Go and do it. I'm absolutely exhausted. I, I feel like how, we're how, happy. how many are there to go? <laughs> oh my goodness. Jeez, okay. All right. <sighs> Fuck me. Yeah. All right. Andrew, you're up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I am going to suggest that if for some reason you are averse to nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to season one. <laughs> Shout out to season No, I, I personally love Longines design era around the 1920s, mm. around the Art Deco period. They, they did some extravagantly beautiful designs. One of them has been evoked here in the Dolce Vita. We, Dolce e Vita. we have a sector dial, we have a beautifully integrated date window above six, so you don't have that issue where you wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh my gosh, it's um, 29 o'clock. You know, it's, it's, it confuses George. He's a simple man. Um, I love well, I this really slightly... I never admitted that with the, car, the, uh, the Hamilton watch. I need a 24-hour kind of timing. Do. I'm yeah, like... Exactly. You, you look, you, your, your creative spirit yeah. um, means that you're practically sometimes a little um, hard to work with. Yes. Um, Are you missing something <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I'm great to work with. Please, you yeah, know, exactly. if we're asking for new people coming yeah, to work, if you have with... a limited edition in production with him, get it. Just get it done. <laughs> get it done. Uh, I, I love this watch. I think uh, this is a real sweet spot for Longines. I think if you're looking for a dress watch that has um, elegance and a connection to the past, including to classic watches like the Tank, consider Longines. I, I, I think that's a brilliant show. Do you know what the price is on that? Off the top of your head, Longines is always good. Yeah, it's always going to be. Oh, I'd, I'd, I think yeah. that I'd, I'd say it's probably slightly more conservative than than the Cartier in in, in a bizarre way. But I I can't argue with that. I went as far as to have the you know the basically the sector dial, which is similar to the yeah that inner inner dial there, like a reset chapter ring. Support that idea, George. You are what, are you what the hell is wrong with you, George? What are you bring? I feel like you should go. You you haven't commented on mine at all. You've no. just completely blanked it. No, I'm not commenting. Um. I, I'm bringing oh, a reverso. George, I knew you'd do this. I just knew it. I'm bringing a reverso because, honestly, I do like the reverso. You're really not doing anything for the cause of separating the reverso from the tank. No, like, I, you know, I, I, no honest, honest, honestly, I, th I think this is, for me, a, a great watch to the point where I, I own the watch. So that's why. Um, but it is. It's a fidget spinner. And and I like this design. I, I think, look, the Cartier tank, as I proved before when I said on this the the opposite for it is I think these are twins that really do need to be side by side and Richemont have got two tigers in the, in their in their camp and and these are the two tigers and I think if you look at that you've got to have that and I think those those two if you look okay. at the alternative that's it can I ask the audience a question on this again I did it yep. last time I've just I just am so offended by George's laziness, by the lack of imagination, and by the continuing conflation of two entirely different models with entirely different intentions. Do you think the tank and the... I'm looking down the camera like a politician. Vote one. Vote for Pedro. Do, do, your, for do, the, do your pointing like that. Vote for the masked <laughs> watchmaker. <laughs> do you think the reverso and the tank are interchangeable if you have one... Because according to George's logic, you don't need the other. Please come with me on a journey of logic <laughs> and vote for both. Thank you. I'm done. I am totally exhausted. Okay, so carrying on with the um, taking George's concept of a boring option to a new level. <laughs> he has. But and supporting your level. argument that the oh, reverso no. and the, the, the tank aren't interchangeable. Okay, so far so good. I give you the Cartier tank. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! I mean, Captain, come on! Oh my goodness. My argument... I have tuned out of season two. My, my, I'm my really argument... looking forward to watching this season. <laughs> my argument is, my argument is... Just spat on the table. There are so many variations of the tank. Yes! That you have highly affordable... I mean, 
Two thousand pounds for a new two thousand pounds is a huge amount of money, regardless of of what you're spending it on. However, you have two thousand pounds quartz steel tanks, and you can get up to yeah. big money yeah. in the automatic full gold versions. And that offering, the I don't think wow, it's this beautiful but expensive the, model. The, the, yeah. the offering is or huge, even a crash. And I don't Not think, yeah, but... I don't think things share the same space as a tank. I feel no. like it is gorgeous yeah. to the point of being... I actually felt it was a few standard. times. I thought that the, the big pilot actually doesn't have any... There's, if you want a big pilot, you can a buy a Stoa or a Laco and you're, you're exactly. kind of a, and yeah. it, 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 You're in the it's, cheap seats. It's, yeah. you're, just, you're wishing you had a big pilot. Um, and I felt with the Daytona, there is no other Daytona because there's no other chronograph as slim that has the same elegance. So it's, it's on its own. So some of these are really hard. And I actually... I, I do agree that there is no other tank. There's the there's Oris models, like I said, Oris spheres. But they, they don't and have the essence. It's not a tank. This. No, it is a tank. I, it might I, be the tank shape, but it but, doesn't have the Cartier. So but that's, that's yeah. why when I was looking at those, I think that was kind of my, my alternative. So um, I do feel like I want to make another little audience moment here. Because <laughs> like I, I know you come to us for, for, for knowledge. For, for I don't think they do. Oh, no. I don't come to any. I know you come to us to laugh at us. Um, but look, we we promised you alternatives and we haven't delivered them. Please do not unsubscribe and unlike. I feel at this point that this episode, it, it maybe this is the one where we see that dramatic decline. It's all so because just, of him. Yeah, just don't unlike and unsubscribe like I want to right now. Uh, yes, so oh, Richard man. Mill. Yep. Richard Mill, is there anything? And again, I, think I, I actually have to say it's, this is a pretty hard. No, I'm. Because I'm, I'm, to me, look, like, did we talk about the lightness? Because the, the, the. Oh, you know, that the is luxury, ultimate luxury. Yes. You, this is a George line that I actually fully agree with when he says there's, there's lots of ways we define luxury and it's changed over time. And the heft of a gold watch for our grandfather, our fathers, was very much a feeling of made it, this is luxurious. Whereas now, I feel that the 70 grams that you have on your wrist when you're a Richard Mill tells you it tells you the same thing. And that is practically unachievable. So it's a it's a very hard watch so, to meet in terms of its actual specifications, but I can meet its aesthetics and I've got a watch for it. So and Andrew, I'm just kind of giving you a bit of a context. I when I first Met Richard Mill, and I was very lucky to meet him. Uh, just, this was you just, uh, you just, just dropped a just, just, you just, just dropped a name on the ground. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Do you want it back? Me. So when I met him, I, it was actually at uh, the precursor to Watch the Wonders. That was my brain's just uh, kind of where's the Watch the Wonders? Maybe anyway, the precursor. He was there, and um, I got introduced from a friend, and I said to her, "Oh, you know." What's the big deal about Richard Mill? And I know that's you kind said of, that to yeah. Richard Mill. Yeah, so oh, wow. that was punchy. Nice opening line. And <laughs> and I said I just don't understand the pricing. I don't understand this. I don't. You know, there was a few things I don't understand. And he I just took like that you did that. He took off his watch. Uh, no, because I'm, I'm I I just ask the questions that I think I need to ask. Mm. And he took off his watch and he said, um, "Hold that, I'll be back in ten minutes." Mm. And this was the Rafa Nadal. And he came back with security. And said, get this fucking guy out of here. Well, almost. Um, but he came and he said to me, what do you think? Mm. And I said, that's luxury. I, I, I like that because it's that shows so much confidence in what he's doing that yeah. you, you want to question what, what I'm doing. You make your own analysis. And then there's the, there's the Pablo McDonald version, which has the movement suspended yeah. with it, within the case with, with wires and, and pulleys. And I mean, it's again... I think we've we've actually uncovered something a little bit distressing, Adrian. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? What that 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 all these watches we're finding alternatives to. There aren't actually alternatives to any of them. So basically, these are two, two episodes that are bullshit. Um, Absolutely, I do have an alternative to this. I've got an alternative as well, but the so more I, I think about it, I but, feel like this is yeah. this is like someone saying, "What's the alternative to a Lamborghini?" It's like, well, that's why I there, said there why I said yeah. to you is. This is the next South of France or something. Well, there isn't. An, uh, there isn't. Yeah. South of France is South of France. Let, or, let's re clarify. Or Melbourne is Melbourne. You know, you know you know, it's not the next yeah. Melbourne. It's not the... I think that the, the bridge too far. The bridge we can deal with, because I'm going to put up the Sistos or Custos Metropolitan, which is a watch that really emulates. Oh, 
Okay. So, you know, we have we have a similar shape. Um, we have that tonneau type shape. We have a similar thickness. We have, again, that... that but for me, the, this is a Frank Miller. Well, it is from that family. Yeah. But again, I mean, you, 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 you can see how from across the room for an unedited or not as obsessed watch person as we are, there are similarities there. Uh, so I would say, and look, Marcus is nodding furiously, which doesn't happen all the time. Um, he might be agreeing with you that it looks like a Frank Muller. But uh, I, I want to say something here about what you can achieve with our most of our alternatives is some sort of overlap with the original, whether yeah. that's in story or intention or era or aesthetics, mm -hmm. but you don't ever get many slices to overlap. You get, in this case, you have an aesthetic similarity, you have exposed screws on the, on the case, you have that tonneau shape, you have the depth in the dial, very similar depth in the dial, very similar width on wrist. So someone is going to say, you know, oh, that's a, you know, there might be that sense of, that's enough for this to be an alternative. But, but we really need at this point, late in the game, in um, episode two, in part two, that we really can't offer more than a couple out of the full criteria because that's the point. They're icons for a reason. They're hard yes. to actually capture and emulate. Yeah. I, I feel like this misses the mark. I, I feel like, I, I, I agree. <laughs> and you're going well between us. I, I, I agree on every point that you've said that it, it, it has, it's got tasting notes of the other. Yeah. But I feel like this is the iconic thing because it all works together. I feel mm. like there's, there's, for me, there's disconnect between um, uh, formality yeah. in design and sportiness. I feel know, like there's, it's a bit yeah. odd. This uh, is the watch, not this actual watch, but this watch. When I first felt the weight of that watch, I was like, I want it. And I, I'm, Do you have a Richard Mill? No, I, I don't because it's above my price point. And so it, it literally is, and it's one of those watches that, you know, if, if we could sell everything down, it would probably be one of those flex watches. And that... do you think, do you see one in your future? No, because it's it's above my price point. But what if you boil down? No. Should we have no, a look in the drawer it, of mystery? And, it's, it, uh, it, I'm pretty sure I could sell one of them no, in the drawer no, of mystery. It, it's it, it, because it's above my price point, and that's the problem. Okay. Is but this is true luxury, and that that's the thing. What are you bringing? So. I, I too struggled with, with with the concept of what Max is laughing at something that always makes me nervous inside. <laughs> no, this might upset people. Good, I'm yeah, pleased. That's why. <sighs> oh, <my God. laughs> so I'd, I'd, um, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to remind you guys the purpose of this episode is is to find alternatives that are either easily more accessible. Shit, this microphone's pulling out my chest here. Good. Oh, you have you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a man. <laughs> Not much of. But uh, so uh, the, explain yourself, sir. So I see the, the nothing purpose is, in common. is, is... <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Do you want to just leave this one? Can, do you want to just just step it out? Maybe just sit this one out. No. So you buy a Richard <laughs> Mille, similar to buying a Submariner. Some people buy a Submariner to show that they're at a certain status, that they're, they're able to achieve a, a, an expense of that level. And I feel like the majority of Richard Mills owners buy them because they can drop £300,000 on a watch and it's a really? massive FU or, or more. I don't know how much they are. This Hublot, I feel, is in a similar vein, just lower down the ranking. Do you know, the one thing I do love that is a scratchless gold. You know, and I think that was that's a, a magic goal. A magic this, gold, I think, is this a is goal. a mere thirty-five thousand pounds. If you're in the position of wanting to show off your wealth in the vein of Richard Mill, but you don't have Richard Mill money, then I feel Hublot does the same thing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's episode two. <laughs> so there. my alternative. Is designed by a friend oh, of mine. Good. Oh, really? Uh, David Serrata. He is. Is so it Davide used, or David? Uh, I, I say Davide because mm. I, I have that kind of like. Um, I'm trying to show off that, that I, I can say it in another language. Um, he, uh, Tudor, he was a designer at Tudor, he designed at Panerai. He has just done the HYT. Um, this, these watches. I thought that said Green Loser. 
but I, I really need to get my eyes checked. It's green light. So Sorry. I'm gonna so, I'm gonna go on to the supernova. But what okay. he's done, I put this on my wrist at um, Watch Week, Geneva Watch Week recently, and mm. I just went, this is a very cool watch. Mm -hmm. It had the same effect of when I put the Richard Mill on in my hand and on my wrist. Both things were like the weight wise, the vibe wise, the whole thing. This is. For me, it's not being a Richard Mill. It's not being that Tonneau case. It is being something new. And that's what I like about the yep. HYT. I think he he deserves the respect, and I think it is one of those watches. So on that note... I completely agree. I, I, totally I, I got hands-on with these just, at, at a London watch it. show, and I, I thought, this is this is just cool. This yeah. is what's making done But do you agree that it ticks the same boxes as that? It, if From a horological point of view, yes, I do. Because it's it's, it's it's a narrow view. It's no, it is absolutely. But I, I feel like this is fun and different from a whole logical point of view, regardless of the pop uh, culture connotations of Richard Mill. It's watchmaking done slightly differently. Yeah. And, and this, I is, would this like is rappers to mention HYT. I would like them to at some point. I don't think it's <laughs> happened yet. This is just a whole different pop no, culture. No, 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 no. But but when this first started out. I, That's you know, your Hubo's right. No, Hubo's the same pop culture. No, and, and, that, and that was that the positioning I, that yeah, I was but, going. Yeah, but, I'm actually but history, somewhat history. This has started out. It's come back. And for me, Richard Mill, when you look at Richard Mill, when it first came out, can you remember those big adverts that basically had the no, price? No. So the the greatest marketing. I don't remember that. That's what they did. Greatest marketing thing, and they had a big advert, and they had the price on it. Okay. So when you were going to the nightclub, you everyone knew how much you'd got on your wrist. That's a good. That and a good it was one of the greatest marketing things. Yeah. Richard Mill, Hublot have had a lot of history. Maybe we should do that this with is advertising segments on about every time. We should just put the price up with <laughs> this. <laughs> this this for me is. If you put history into this, if I scroll 20 years down the line, I think HYT, with the design team, with what they're doing, I think it could be that or it could God, be that. Your passion is scaring okay? me. Uh, and look, Andrew's having, look at that. Oh look my goodness. goodness. Wow. What so a talented this is maker. not a watchmaker. This is a. He's the master drinks maker. Drinks and you maker. get this. Oh, wow. Ooh. Thank you, sir. Wow, that was even given with a bit of flourish. Look at yeah. that. There's a garden. This is like a little so terrarium. This is olive leaf gin, okay? Oh, wait a second. I'm going to... So in this envelope, we learned from episode one, there is the, the name of the drink, the type of the gin, which this has olive oil and is comprised of olives, um, and it has a question from the founder of Four Pillars, Matt Jones. Doesn't, look, I mean, he goes kind of... So this is olive yeah. leaf gin. Here we go. I hope it's a little easier on us than the last question. Why does everything taste better in Spain? They elevated everything from ham to gin and tonic into an art form. But is there a Spanish watch brand um, I should know about? Jesus Christ. There is one, and I've forgotten the brand's name. It's, it... I haven't got a clue. Look, there is a brand first then, or I can't picture the watch, but I know first then is Spanish. Um, maybe this is an audience question. Actually, the, we're being yes. encouraged to talk down a lens and say, please enlighten us. Are we missing anything from Spain? Are there any great Spanish watchmakers we don't know about? I, I think there should be a unique Spanish watchmaker, someone that actually makes um, the watch. Just one thing. This is amazing. I mean, like... That this is good. Because what happens is that the herb gets up your nose. Yeah. And I'm, then it actually it, it makes yeah. you taste different. It's, it's, it's a whole experience. It's, yeah. It's... it's Cool. I mean, it's so awkward like, to drink. I mean, it's like falling into a garden. I'm, I'm kind of wondering where our where our coffee mugs are because I want them back. Um, <laughs> but this is delicious. We can hide how much we're drinking. Um, <laughs> it's so yeah. Four pillars. Thank this you, is pillars. absolutely amazing. And thank you for giving us a question that stumped us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it yeah, really it did yeah. kind of like kind of we put a flummox had, there. Not much. Um, so thank you very much. And I've, I've used two words that I've been really excited to use. Yep. Stumped us and flummoxed us. Yeah. Um, I on do that have one note, more thing to say before we move on from sponsors. Okay. We would also like to thank uh, Land Rover for getting us here today. You saw it in the opening Oh, credits. yes. Uh, do not mix Four Pillars and Land Rover. But the thing that's compatible. <laughs> <Good point. laughs> the, yes. the two sponsors don't go well. But, but the, they go well in us. Let me yeah. say that we we uh, buy and love both brands well yes, before indeed. they were ever partners of ours. Um, and look, I did. I feel a little bit self conscious about the fact that I said, who got a Land Rover? And we all put our hands up. My Land Rover is like 25 years old. 
Uh, it I've is got a, a few of them. It is a le- yes, you do. <laughs> I have a Discovery. Uh, it is um, my favorite car in the world, and it is not a new Discovery. But um, just to put that out there, this is you can be a Land Rover person and owner without mm, necessarily. You have, to, you have to love love the brand, and I think you can yeah. easily. So um, yeah, it's it's a great brand. Um, on that, can I ask our uh, drinks maker, watchmaker. I He's like, everything. He is, a, well, he, she, we, we've we exactly. got Exactly, we do not um, know. So I'm going to hand you these back. Uh-oh. Because I realise... Oh, I keep mine. Uh, well, yeah, we're gonna... Let's just keep them. Oh, Let's right, just keep yeah. them. Okay, on the note, I think he's made this up for me. I think he, I'm honestly... Good, I it's think... a tag, of course. Every time tag's I, mentioned I'm it's like, for yes! you. I'm like, yes! Yeah, yeah. Um, oh no, boy, so Adrian, this takes me back to our conversation because there ain't nothing like a Monaco that ain't a Monaco, um, as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot of stuff that has ripped off the Monaco, yeah. Um, but I'm I've got a, an answer, but I'm not very happy with it, to be honest. Can I can I, I go first? Can I can I go first with this? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Um, because you it has that, it has to be something that is different. It's something that is in this well um, way. I I would go to you and say another Monaco because that's me. I like the Titania one, but I've gone Bell and Ross, and for me, I I went Bell and Ross because I think you... the Bell and Ross um, the the, oh, the X... BRO five yeah. I think to myself, this is it's it's an alternative. I think that it's Bell and Ross uh, integrated bracelets. I think it is an alternative. It's different uh, because you can't if you mirror a Monaco, it's it's a copy of a Monaco. So for me, I I look at this and it's a different thing. It's still got the same aesthetic. It's still got something that's that squared off um, shape, and but. I will still go back to a Monaco. I, 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 you know, on these two things. This is the problem: is this is such yeah. an icon, it, this, you know, that when you try and replicate an icon, you can't. I'm turning my nose up, but I'm, I'm turning my no- nose up at my own suggestion as well, because I, I think it comes back to our conversation a few minutes ago. I just feel that this is a design that just pretty much ended it. It's one of those. Okay, there's yeah. a square watch world that will be the only one that people recognise across the room that looks like this yeah what have you got and I, I, i've got nothing <laughs> but, but but to this I point respect that. I, I, I like this bell on ross i've not seen this this format before i i, I think it's, this this looks awesome there is, but there is one that i kind of like on these ones I, I don't think that's anything related to that despite no. the fact it's no slightly it just shows that some of the parts aren't the same right yeah yeah, yeah. but th- this is too much of an icon it's, it's too much of its own thing yeah Again, it's a good looking watch, but it but it's too rounded. Like the fact that they've rounded off the square that is the iconic yeah. Bell and Ross. How, I will yeah. give Bell and Ross iconic status because of that flight instrument. Yeah. Yes. Know, yeah. One the, master stroke he yeah, had. The, 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 stra- the, the iPad square. agrees that we shouldn't even show that. I, look, I'm going to go the Cartier Santos square. You know, again, but it's it's that's the it. BRO. That's the that's yeah. the Bell and Ross again. I don't even want to put it on the screen. Yeah. It doesn't deserve to be there. Yeah. It's a great watch in its own right. Um, but so we're, just, we're because, in agreement that the icon of a Monaco... And let's, let's really strip a little bit more about why this watch is unreplicatable. There's that slab crystal that got is one up there. extraordinary. Um, thank you, Master Watchmaker. Um, there's the, the, the actual shape of the square has a lot of complexity to the case construction. But the, the slab crystal, I, when, when I look down at my Caliber 11's McQueen Monaco, I'm forever that twisting, distorting. Huge. Look how thick it is. Yeah. It's it's like a it's a but proper even like slab the stepped crystal. case as well. What I love is yes. it's stepped that up and stepped case. up, and it's and then the construction. Yeah. It's not just a block. Uh, there's there's this. Look at the way this tapers off at the the case back. Look, the Monaco is just unimprovable, and this whole exercise has been quite. I think the reason we both need to lie down, Adrian, is because it's, it's exhausting <laughs> it, trying it. <laughs> well, I think it's been... <laughs> it might be you, good for team bonding. <laughs> no, no, but do you know the thing I will say to you is it's been quite cathartic in some ways because we've realised that icons can't be bettered. And right. and in some ways, I think that's that's a good way. I think the last one is, is a major drop the mic icon. And mm-hmm. I think it's hard to better bet this icon because I remember when we were going through this list, I was like, I have some how, good the ones hell, this, how the hell do. do you... Replicate. See, is it that one? Yes, it's that one. Here we go. The magic so, draw. 
I suspect that me and this this guy here are the same age. I think this is from 1976. This is the three Look how thin zero. that is. It is that's. That's the magic. So that's that's an early early one, and it's good to see because you can un understand how it's um, changed. If we're not the same age, we're damn close. I'm, I'm going to go first on this one. No, this is the no, no. Uh oh. Oh no. No, Adrian. The Laureata. Fuck no. you. Now the reason I feel like this is a better alternative related to the Nautilus than the Royal Oak. If you ignore the very similar pattern on the on the dial, yeah. there's an elegance about mm -hmm. the Laureata. Well, it's the roundedness. It's the roundedness. Yeah. It's it's the polished center links on the bracelet. There, there's there's a certain elegance of the Laureata that I feel the Nautilus has. The Nautilus. I has. tend to. I think that's not wildly off. And I I, I, I did a video recently so where I I feel like the 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 Laureata sits nicely between the elegance of the the Royal Lake, sorry, the elegance of the Nautilus and the sporty. Of the sporty role. geometric sort of harshness. Yeah. So what do you think it's more like? Because it, it is right in the middle, isn't it? It is right in the middle. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's it's equally in the middle. I'd say that the head of the watch, the dial of the watch, is is sporty like the Royal Oak. The rest of the case. Royal Oak? Nautilus. Yeah. No, I'd say the rest of the case and bracelet is, yeah. is Nautilus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got one that's better than that. Like, yeah. pretty substantially but um yeah oh yeah the urban jorgensen one that's much more interesting than mine is has many i would say attributes of the nautilus however the roundedness throws you off a little bit i was really torn between that and the speak marin ripples which is oh yeah okay have you seen this one yeah yeah so marcus we shot this one and we felt that there was no, I, 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 I yeah, yeah. But see, isn't it interesting watching when we've been going through icon after icon? Mm. You just it, it ends up being this mashup situation where now I'm like, hmm, actually, that's more like uh, that, that's that's a hard mess for me. This this is that you think there's something there. The, the, this 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 is arty. There's there's something clever about this. I I, yeah. I I can't say what it is, but this this. This is much more interesting. Well, the Urban Jorgensen one, I mean, this uh, this brand is actually quite a, a mysterious brand in that it's just been bought by Kari Right. Oh, really? So it's, okay. it's uh, I was interviewed in the New York Times about how, what, what would he possibly be doing with a brand like that? You yeah, know, it's just a little rag, the right. New York Times. Yeah, yeah. I've not heard of it. Yeah, no. Um, Isn't he on some? And, uh, some sorry, some were you bad. with Richard Mill at the time? You might You must have missed it. Wasn't he? Was yeah. <laughs> Oh, stop. So, New York Times. Time. No, no. We talked We talked about why Curry Vizlanen would buy Urban Jorgensen. And I just was concerned that with this purchase, he would sweep. Because there was a there was a rumor that they would reset the brand, hard reset, and that the one would go with it. I really hope not. Because I feel that while this isn't, obviously, this is, there's not much about this that's like a Nautilus. There's still something that comes, like when you looked at it and went, ah. It's intangible, but yeah. I, I think that this is certainly, in terms of watchmaking, exclusivity, scarcity, rarity, all those things, it ticks the boxes, and I actually love this watch very much. Oh, that's a good shot. Thank you. It's hard to find. Okay, your GP. Mm -hmm. I'll go yours, with Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I I was going GP, so it's just I'm, getting knocked I'm not, around on the table. Like it's... I'm not I'm not going GP because I'm I'm going something different. But what I'm going to bring to you as an alternative, if I can find in our little cubby hole here, is because but it it's not new, and both of these are designed by Gerard Junta, and for me that's the alternative. Um, but it's not it's not made. Uh, so I and we are I, getting into proper mashup territory here, aren't we? Like, is that is that more like? That is a more like an. They were both designed by Gerald Janta. You can get it for not very much, and that's for me. Uh, I think it's a, a great. It's a, good, it's a, it's good a great tip. alternative. Vintage but, is a good tip. But for me, oh, yes. there is the alternative yes. now because you've just done what you've done, and so You're I'm going to jumping in with that. I'm going to jump in with something that I think is something that I think that's is another flex, uh, and of course it's a great website. Uh, but here. Oh boy. God, I can't stand shit websites. 
Um, Moza. We have some good B-roll to put over it, don't worry. About um, but Moza, yeah. I think the Streamliner is such a great watch. When I put this on my wrist, I thought, yeah, actually, it's a bit yeah. like the uh, Patek Beta 21 when they came out with the television dial. Mm -hmm. This has got that married to the Nautilus, and I think it is a great watch. I think this is your modern alternative to the Nautilus. Um, and it still has Bracelets a flex appeal, and the bracelet, and even the polishing yeah. on the bracelet with that matte, with that just, you know, when we talk about polishing, you talked about polishing earlier, yeah. just with that little flex of, incredible. Of, mm. of polishing, for me, that was, that just felt that way, and, yeah. and you know, it is, it is a watch that, um, the gold one, when I put the gold one on at, um, Geneva Watch Day, um, or Watch Weekend, or whatever the hell it was, I, I just went, oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I, I, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm based in, I'm based in London, I, are, and I, yeah. I want a gold watch. They're, they're it's vibe, like whoa, the vibe. It's, it's, it's all about, as we say on the castle, it's the vibe, and the vibe of this, while being a, a different to me, this is a, a, a cushion case with rounded edges. It's, yeah. it's quite different to the, well, I guess they, are, in, in integrated bracelets, in shape wise, they're, they're similar. But look, I, I feel in a world of confusion, and what I really need right now in my life is in a BYOI. I want something different to the icons. So what do you have? Can we change it up? Because we're now getting, you know what I mean, Adrian? We're looking at what, it's just this huge We're, we're, get, we're getting deep, up. and we're I feel like we, we, we need to zoom out. We yeah, to, zoom out and get to something okay. new. Okay, um, but I bring a, I've brought a BYOI, and this is um, Don, uh, there's a friend of mine's brand, uh, it's called Vertex, mm -hmm. um, and he has just done a brand new watch, um, and he, he is just, he is a cool guy, um, I like, I like him, and he just sent me, he sent me a message, and he said, George, I'm gonna just se send you a little voice like recording of how, how we how we did it, and for me the uh, the watches are because this is another relaunched brand. This is a brand from the early twentieth century. But he's Huntington. got history with us, mm. and that's the thing is it's in it's in the family. This is the Aqualion. It, for me, is is the watch that I love. I loved what he did on the bezel. There was this wonderful thing of uh, military inspired. It's got um, these cutouts on the bezel. It is a great watch. Now I've got a voice recording um, of his. And here it is. Hi, my name is Don Cochran, and I'm the owner of the Vertex Watch Company. It was founded by my great grandfather in 1912. We are well known for being one of the dirty dozen watchmakers that supplied the Allies during the Second World War. Our modern watches very much reflect our military history, the M100 being a direct descendant of our dirty dozen watch. The MP45 is a watch designed for bomb disposal at the end of the war, and now used for timing, well, other things. Finally, the M60 is a new dive watch, which takes its inspiration from the dive watches we made in the 50s and 60s. Built to be almost indestructible, it's cost certified, ISO rated, and waterproof to 600 meters. All our watches have molded supernova leather dials for unrivaled legibility and low light. We are British based and Swiss made. Okay, how I'm fucking in. cool is I'm he? I'm buying that. Is that, that, that was because well I was looking put. at the numerals before, like they cut out of solid yeah. super luminous. The, the, the numerals are sick. they really are amazing. It's, I love and, that yeah. the dimensionality of that. And whilst we're recording this, um, he has, he's launching a new watch. Um, <clears> that we we don't know which watch he's launching, but I can't wait to see it because when this comes out, there'll be another watch on his website. So, cool. look, Don, you rock this brand for me is one of those brands that is. A real tick and yeah. it, it, it's just it, i like bringing british brands and this is one of those mm -hmm. with history with with proper provenance that you yeah. just go this this works yeah i, I think this this works too about i think time still works i mean i, I wasn't sure in episode one but i, I feel like it works yeah it's because i'm hosting it yeah that's you know, it, <laughs> well, yeah. Is he going to say, I win at some point, Marcus? I win! I win! <laughs> Thanks for um, watching. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you to our sponsors. And thank you to you, each and every one of you, for watching us and subscribing and actually putting up with our crap because I put up with the, these two guys' crap. Um, and you imagine such a lot. <laughs> I, thank you so much. I'm out. I'm out as well. I'm, I'm going to go. Ha, 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 ha.